You've given her the healing in time so that she could get up and testify that Jesus is still real and that he works in our lives. Father, we pray, especially with a very heavy heart, Lord, for the sh uh, shooting at the school. Lord, we do not know what the parents are going through. We can never know. Because a love between a mother, a father, and their child, only they can know, and only you can know. But Father, as sin increases in this world, oh Lord, people are getting crazier. You know, and they are performing acts of sin as if it is nothing for them. Father, we pray that you will, it's, it's very hard to say this, but that you will give forgiveness to that person who did this. And may you give him a heart of reconciliation and repentance. And he, may be, he or she may be able to know what they have done. But Lord, at the same time, Please, please condone the hearts of the parents who have lost their loved ones. There may be silence, there may be mourning in their house at this time. But we pray, O oh Lord, that the love of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will work in their hearts and in their lives. That someone in the name of Jesus will reach them with the love of God. That they will do something very genuine to them so that they may feel good. Father, we also pray for the youth of our children for the children of our church, for the amazing way. Lord, they can be anywhere in the world right now, but they choose to be in your house. And we praise you for that. We praise you for giving them the heart, oh Lord, to know you more and more, to know God, to know that creator who provides, who sustains, who saves. And so, oh Lord, we pray that you will bless their hearts, their lives, as they move forward in their life. Once again, we all come in ourselves into your hand, O Lord, for the rest of the week. At this time, as the preacher breaks the bread of life, Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will give him a special unction. And as he speaks, it may be like a balm to our hearts, o Lord, and that we may apply it in our lives and we may share the love of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen.
He said, okay, God, we will serve you. We'll serve the Lord our God, and we will obey him. All right? So you guys are going to be the wall. So you have to face each other. Hold hands. <laughs> like this. Hold hands like this. It's going to be a wall. They scoot on this, yes. All right. And then I need, let's say, three other volunteers. Well, you're already volunteer. <laughs> All right. You three? All right. So if you remember the story, God said, I want you to go around the wall six times. And then on the seventh time, go around seven times. And then you're going to sound a trumpet. So the six times, you have to go very quietly. And you know what Joshua said? He said, okay, God, I'll serve you. I will obey you. It's all right, guys. We're going to go around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Now it's the seventh day. So you need all of you guys up. So all the Israelites, the priests, they have the Ark of the Covenant. Everything was there. On the seventh time, they had gone on seven times. And on the seventh time, they blew a trumpet. Wait, wait, wait. We have to practice our trumpets. Your hand. Me hear it. Okay, you think that's going to take the wall down? No? Let me hear it. Okay, you guys are shy. I don't know if the wall is going to come down if that's the sound I'm getting. You ready? Last time, you ready? And then I'll tell you the seven times. So I'm going to start. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the seventh time, Joshua, you heard from God. They said, okay, sound the trumpets. And they said, okay, we will serve you, God, and we will obey you. So the seventh time, The verse I want you guys to remember, and what's really important, is that when God speaks and he has a plan for us, when he has something that seems so big, how are we ever going to overcome it? How would, you know, why would they think the walls would just come tumbling down, right? So what we have to say, we, we will serve, will serve our God. Our God. We, we will obey him. Will obey him. Remember, we try one more time. All right, we. We will serve, will serve our God. Our God. We, we will obey him. Will obey. Okay, and that's Joshua 24, 24. So it's a good thing to remember to serve and obey God. All right? So do I have a volunteer for prayer? All right? Do you have anyone else? Okay. <laughs> Thy has you close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing us to church. Help us to have a good time. Please help us to get to our destination safely after church. Help us to have a nice communion. Please help us to figure out what communion is about and help us to love you and serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, boys and girls, and have a happy Sabbath. points to the day when uh, we will not have religious liberty. That's why the offerings for, for religious liberty is important. Has anybody ever spoken with somebody who is from a place where there was no religious liberty? We actually had a, 
a member of our church. He was a pastor from Romania. He's not our pastor, he's an elder here. But uh, he came from Romania. And one day he brought some books that, uh, I never forgot this. They were books that were printed on the thinnest paper. You could hold a sheet up and uh, you could probably hold five sheets up and still read through them. They were so thin. And what they were was the writings of Ellen White. And they were reproduced by teenage girls typing on a typewriter, typing 10 sheets at a time by hand. And he said the trick was you wanted to get a book that was made from one of the sheets that was in the middle. You didn't want the first one because the typing was so hard that the keys went right through the paper. And you didn't want the last one because the carbon paper was so faded by the time it got through the stack that you couldn't read the last one. And as I held one, he brought them and he sat them out here. And I held one of these books in my hand and I realized what a precious thing religious liberty is. The fact that these young women were risking prison time, and he said one of them, the Russian soldiers, took one of these girls and burned her hands on a hot belly stove when they caught her. This is what they risked. And we have our Bibles with us and our, all of our religious materials, and we have that freedom. So religious liberty, very important thing. The Religious Liberty Offering sends Liberty Magazine to thought leaders or in our community as well sends uh, materials to elected leaders, sends materials to uh, pastors of Sunday churches, among others. Many thought leaders have forgotten the lessons of history. Prophecy tells us these lessons will be forgotten, which will result in church and state uniting again. Not only will sending liberty to thought leaders inform them of important religious liberty principles, but the Holy Spirit can use Liberty Magazine to convict them of the truth. The Religious Liberty Offering also funds mitigating the cases of church members who lose their jobs because they're not willing to work on the Sabbath. Litigation is not cheap. We have a lawyer in our midst over here. Litigation, expensive stuff. Uh, but it's important, and it's important to establish positive legal precedents to protect our rights going forward. The cases of two Seventh-day Adventists, Adele Sherbert and Paula, Hobby who lost their jobs over the Sabbath went to the United States Supreme Court. In each case, the Supreme Court ruled in their favor, establishing positive legal precedents which benefited other church members. Let's take advantage of today's calm before the storm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these tithes and these offerings and use them so that the word may be spread far. At Liberty Magazine and the other offerings that are the, the other uh, publications that come from our church may influence people far and near, influence leaders, influence people, leaders of other churches. And Lord, we ask that you bless the tithes as well and that they help our church, the Seventh day Adventist church, to grow and spread your. To complete the mission. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Come forward.
Let's open our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 13. Luke 18, 13. That's uh, Jesus speaking from the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And it says, And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And God bless the reading of his word.
And the seventh again, everyone. Seven. We'll sleep when we have the seventh again. Let's bow our heads once more as we begin. Dear Father in heaven, truly is a privilege to open your word and study the messages that you have left here for your children. Lord, help us to value these words as the woman who sought the lost coin of the shepherd who searched for his lost sheep. Dear Father, open our hearts and our minds. Be with us as we start to pray. Bless this new name. Amen. <coughs> we truly do live in a world of privilege, don't we? There's an awful lot to take for granted. you uh, did your laundry the washboard and the wooden tub. It's been a while, I guess. How many of you still remember rotary phones? Turn the dial and wait for it to click. How many of you had to pick up the phone and call the operator, tell them the number you wanted to dial and wait for them to connect you? Going back away. Not too long ago, though. We're using outhouse? Yeah. Hand pump water into a bucket. In 1920, only 1%. Our homes in this country had electricity and indoor plumbing. 1940, 20 years later still, nearly half the houses lacked hot pipe water, bathtub, shower, or flushing toilet. Vacation 
is considered a right. How about that? Can you imagine if our Declaration of Independence said life, liberty, and a two-week tropical holiday in August? <coughs> it's almost unthinkable, but that's the way it is. We want so much stuff. We say we need it. Jeremiah 12.1 says, Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you, yet let me talk with you about your judgments. Lord, I have a question about the way you're doing things. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? Whether we realize it or not, we as Christians can get caught up in this trap of desire and never know it. No matter how much effort we put into trying to go to church, we try to help people, and at Adventists we love to remind everyone of the fourth commandment, yet we're still just as likely to forget the tenth as much as anyone else. We covet, desire other people's stuff. We're going through a lesson study this quarter on stewardship. And you can see right on the cover of the lesson study, it tells you what the whole thing's about. The primary consideration is the